89.9 KMOJ. Today's R&B and throwbacks. That's one of my favorite songs from Trey Songs that's out right now. All this love. But right now it's six after the one o'clock hour. And on the phone lines, I have one of my favorite people in the Twin Cities, Mr. Anthony Taylor on the line. How are you today, Anthony? I am good, Kim. I feel blessed today. What a What a gorgeous day, even though it's a little bit rainy. It's still a beautiful day, don't you think? It, I do agree. I would agree. It does look I, like, uh oh, it looks like the rain is starting to come down though now. You know, and I, I'm a I'm I'm a fan of the rain, especially in the springtime. <laughs> that means things are starting to turn green. It's starting to be lovely. Uh, so I am happy, and I always feel blessed to be on Minneapolis 360. Welcome, Minneapolis. My name is Anthony Taylor. I am uh, the African-American community specialist for the neighborhood and community relations. And this is uh, our weekly show. Uh, As all of you know, who've been uh, listening, we are going weekly uh, instead of every second and fourth week uh, because of the Derek Chauvin trial. And a lot of our information is regarding uh, not the specifics of the trial, but yet we talked about a lot of different things. And this is Uh, Just another outlet and platform that I think that we can have our community folks kind of talk and give us resources and help. So uh, I'm lucky today would be to be with someone uh, from the youth coordinating board. Uh, One of the things that I know and I think we all know Minneapolis is that our young adults definitely have something to say and they should be heard. Uh, And a lot of times I love to make sure that if I can get them on and and give them a platform to kind of just speak about some of the things that they're working on. Uh, I think a lot of times we as older adults get caught up in our things in our life and what we have going on. But a lot of times uh, the youth are are making major moves uh, in this city. And if we look historically in our country, uh, the young folks are the spark plug for a lot of big movements in our in our country's history. So uh, when I get a chance to, I would love to make sure that they have a platform. So I've got. Uh, a few guests on uh, from the Youth Coordinating Board uh, to hop on and kind of talk with us. But first, before we go, I just wanted to make sure that folks kind of understand a a couple different things. And it's around the the, the vaccines. Uh, As we know, Governor Walz last week opened up uh, the uh, vaccinations for everyone 16 years of age and older. So if you have made that choice to get a vaccine uh, and it's your choice, please make sure that you get that information. And I want to give you a, a website that you can go. It's called the, the, the Vaccine Connector. So it's vaccineconnector.mn.gov. And you can get on there and kind of navigate your way around this to find out uh, where vaccines are available. It's also uh, available in different languages. So you'll be able to, if you're not uh, an English speaker, you're able to navigate that space as well. Uh, also, too, just to know a little bit more about what to expect getting the vaccine, you can go to Minneapolis.gov slash coronavirus slash vaccine just to get information regarding the three different uh, vaccinations that are out there. But I, I want to make sure I, I say this website again uh, quickly, uh, vaccineconnector.mn.gov, and you can find out where you can get uh, your vaccines uh, to make sure that, that you're safe and your family's safe. Uh, as well. Uh, still COVID going on, uh, Minneapolis. Uh, be able to get your your, your COVID test is important. Uh, a couple websites I want to give you is health.state.mn.us uh, to get uh, appointments to get your uh, COVID test at the Minneapolis Convention Center. Uh, and there's a lot of different places that you can go around our, our country. You can go to around our state, excuse me, our city, you can also go to Minneapolis.gov slash coronavirus to get some guidance on where you can still uh, get your COVID testing. You know, as, as the world kind of opens up, our, our country starts opening up and our city starts opening up, we still have to remember that we are in, still in the midst of a pandemic and it gets a lot harder as the weather gets nicer and things start to loosen up. And in Minneapolis, listen, I get it. There's a lot of COVID fatigue. I have experienced that and I still experience COVID fatigue, but I also make sure that I try to keep safe. I wear my mask, I social distance, I do all of those things uh, necessary. And as I shared with you last week, Minneapolis, I am fully vaccinated, but that does not exclude me or anybody else from still taking those precautions. So I just want to be clear 
on how we start to navigate these spaces when it comes to the weather and the fatigue. So we have to make sure that we're, we're keeping, we're keeping our, our, our eyes dotted and our T's crossed. Uh, as well, too, we are on the second week of the Derek uh, Chauvin trial. As you know, this is the ex-officer uh, charged with murder of killing uh, our beloved George Floyd. That is in week two. Uh, please make sure that if you are uh, getting information or you're watching that trial to make sure that you're taking care of yourself uh, and you're also not necessarily, uh, like I talked before, just gavel to gavel coverage. Take a break sometime, Minneapolis. And I've talked to a lot of people over the last couple of weeks and, and folks are, are, are definitely tuning in. Some are, are taking it in in moderation. Others are in it uh, deep and, and whatever you choose. So I just want to make sure that you do the right thing and taking care of yourself and making sure that you're, you're centering yourself. So any information uh, on any ger- uh, services at the government center, uh, you can get on hennepin.us uh, slash media slash shopping trial to get a lot of information uh, regarding uh, the trial. So uh, with that being said, I want to bring in our guests uh, from the youth coordinating boards, Melissa Flores. Hi, Mess. How are you doing today? And welcome to KMOJ. Hi, thank you so much for having me. Um, I'm doing really good. I'm excited to graduate from Oxford University this year. So that's wow, really exciting. Wow, congratulations. That's a, that's so a beautiful much. thing. That's a beautiful thing, Melissa, and that's always a a big celebration. So I'm I'm super excited for you. I know you are. So you know, school is a is a lot. It right? is, especially during COVID, right? I'm proud of you. Yes, thank you so much. It's been really tough transitioning, but I'm excited to finally have that milestone ahead of me. We are talking to Melissa Hymas from Youth Coordinating Board. Kind of tell us how long you've been uh, with uh, YCB, uh, Melissa, and kind of what's your role with the uh, Youth Coordinating Board? Yes. So right now I'm a senior at Augsburg, and I decided to join um, Minneapolis Youth Congress again after um, having a little time apart. I've been in Minneapolis Youth Congress since I was 16. Um, Now I'm 21. And I, I'm now a program coordinator, which means I'm assisting and helping um, our youth in our programs and on our boards that we have. And um, now we have our meetings on Zoom, but we hope to, when things get better, definitely have a chance to have our meetings in person again. Along with a lot of people, and I'm definitely one of those too, Melissa. So talk about some of the age ranges. When you say youth, right, youth can mean a lot of different things to a lot of different people. Yeah. So so what are some yeah. of the, the age and grade uh, ranges from some of the youth that you serve? Yeah. So our members are from 8th to 12th grade, and usually they serve one to two years. And Minneapolis Youth Congress is – where youth work and collaborate with elected officials and other staff to help make decisions affecting youth in Minneapolis. Um, and there is about 50 to 60 members annually. Beautiful. So, Go ahead. Yeah, I just was going to say someone is trying to call in. We can try to see if it's just a caller that, you know, one yeah. has a question or if it's our other guest. Yeah, let's see if that's Kai. Cam or Jay? Hey, Glam Golden, what's up, baby girl? <laughs> All right, hey, I'm going to say. I can do it on this rainy day. Hey, can yeah. I hear that song? Okay. For all the studios, oh. I saw oh. you okay. and him. We got you, we honey. The rain. Oh, I got you, it okay. It's cold outside. All right. <laughs> yeah, I, I ain't mad. At least, ah. at, least the, at least the song that he asked for was one of the best. It was uh, one of the best. One of the songs <laughs> <laughs> So, oh, that's too uh, funny. We got we to gotta play that song at some time. But we, we are will. still with M- Melissa from the Youth Coordinating Board. Melissa, just uh, talk about some of the ways that the Youth Congress has kind of collaborated with the city of Minneapolis and in some of the, 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 the ways that you think that's important and why that is. So just talk a little bit about the collaboration with the city. Yeah, so Minneapolis Youth Congress, um, they've partnered with um, members and people in um, Minneapolis um, officials. And so 
Minneapolis Congress members have met with ward meetings to get information on what youth would want to have in Minneapolis and what that would look like in the next five years. And these conversations have been happening since 2019, and they've been the main focus on what NYC focuses on and talks about. Uh, but we definitely have other events that happen each year, such as the annual Teen Job and Opportunity Fair at the Central Library, and that just gives the opportunity for young people and young adults to come in and try to find a job, um, and we provide those um, pamphlets and flyers on how to apply, and we do a small um, fashion show on how to, like, dress um appropriately for like a job interview uh and that's been really fun but with our circumstances the past year we weren't able to do that do that um but there's other things when uh we did a tobacco 21 ordinance um so this was when we our youth was able to be legalized and talk to officials to change the sale age from tobacco from 18 to 21 which we research on and shows that would reduce tobacco use and prevent kids from starting to smoke at a young age. And so that's what Minneapolis Youth Congress really work with the Minneapolis Health Department to get that to happen. We are talking with Melissa Hymas from uh, the Youth Coordinating Board on collaborations with the city. Uh, and, and Melissa, I want to kind of get into some, some, some deeper questions with you and, and um, one of the things that I had uh, talking about earlier was just how uh, young adults and young folks get involved, right? And, and a lot of times, I, I think uh, the younger generation maybe miss out on engaging other young people. And, and, and one of the things that I think is important is that folks get involved. And and you seem that you are are super involved, right? You talked about being involved since you were 16 years of age. So I just kind of want to know what's your motivation right how do you how do you how do you motivate yourself and what what caused you to kind of be in this and and the way that you you do and you view your energy and your activism in community what motivated you melissa definitely uh i was involved since i was 16 and i was involved since i graduated high school but then i had to start uh, college and that's when i kind of had to part ways for a little bit but then um, being at my university, the opportunities of working are, like, limited. Uh, there's work study, but that's, like, working at the library or working at, like, a cafe. But uh, that's, like, not what excited me. Definitely coming back to the youth um, and being, like, a mentor, some sort of partnership and allyship with the students really is what motivated me because I was just so, so amazed to go back and realize the passion that they have. And I was intimidated by the students and the youth because they, they, they bring so much excitement and they want change. Yep. And when I was their age, I was maybe a little bit shy, but Minneapolis Youth Congress really does change students and youth just like myself to be and be more confident, advocate for themselves, speak loud, and uh, present yourself in a way where um, adults, look at you and are also just like me intimidated and want to see what you're about. So that was, that's what motivates me being a part of this organization that you can see the change that, and the passion that there is for these students. And you. All right. We got a caller. You want to try to take it? Yeah, I think that's Kai. All right. KMOJ. KMOJ. Caller, you there? Well, maybe they should try to call back. It's, it's, it's buzzing. Maybe she'll call this back. Is, maybe she'll call back. But we, you know, what a great answer that you gave, Melissa. Uh, and uh, just because of that, I mean, it, it actually, I don't know if you even realize it, but it, it motivates a lot of the older adults to really get involved, too, with that answer. Because I, I think a lot of times as, as older adults, we, we tend to be caught up in our responsibilities. But what motivated you was just to seeing other people get active. And, and one of the things that I wanted to, to ask you, too, um, and one of the things that I think is important to really just kind of understand is that um, when you are in the middle, we're in the middle 
of this trial, right, of, of Officer Derek Chauvin uh, and the cause of death of, of George Floyd. And, and really, uh, this has captured, I think, the country's attention. And I'm not going to say people of color because we always understand that we want our rights. We want to be treated equally. We want systemic racism to end. We want all of those things. So what what was interesting to me, and I'd like uh, for you to kind of expand on that is from your perspective, how important is the youth to be involved with a passing out this information or, or, or and B informing other young people around them uh, in regards to the importance of this moment? Can you kind of talk about that a little bit? Yeah, especially because this happened in Minneapolis. I feel like a lot of our youth are motivated and they they're the ones living through this this happened in our city and they're thinking about the future and the present what are things that they can do now and what are things that that we do now that we are able to that will help and better our society in the future um and definitely i feel like a lot of adults and just the standards of seeing young people in a young in youth um sometimes we Maybe don't listen to them, but it, I think it's important to listen to their voices and uh, definitely have, like you said, maybe our parents and older generations are busy, but that's why when it comes to youth, they're the ones fighting out there, um, getting our voices heard because they're willing to go out there and, like, you know, definitely make change in a way where they're, they feel like they have a chance to make change as well. We are talking with Melissa from the Youth Coordinating Board. Um, and, and what are some of the, the spaces uh, that you feel uh, other young people are supported in, Melissa? So, you know, you talked about being amongst each other. What are some of those conversations? Are they happening? Are they not happening? What's your thoughts on that? Um, but I feel like uh, our schools uh, hopefully are having these conversations, um, but it's also difficult with what, like, transitioning to Zoom and everything. Uh, definitely there need to be more spaces like Minneapolis Youth Congress. I know other parts that are not in Minneapolis, like Brooklyn Park or Brooklyn Center, that have something very similar. And just having these spaces, um, again, maybe in the future, uniting and having safe spaces to talk about these topics would be important to have um right now definitely uh i know like after school programs and other places could definitely work on that as well talking with melissa from youth congress what are, what are some of your and, I, and i'm glad you're you're talking and, and speaking with us today because I, I think it really gives folks any young people who are listening to our show folks an idea of your drive and your motivation and and, and how I mean, you are, are such a, a, a beautiful young sister because I can hear your vision, your, your aspirations, and it comes out in, in your voice. So when I ask you this question, and it, and it may be kind of a, a, a tough question because a lot of times you, we can't see some of the things that we want, some of our hopes and dreams at the times where we are having difficult times. I mean, this, this, this last year for our city has been like no other with a lot of different uh, issues along with COVID, along with George Floyd, along with housing, along with the financial stresses of businesses and individuals. If I would ask you, Melissa, what are some of your 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 hopes and your changes you would want to see in Minneapolis? What would you tell uh, other youth in this city? That's definitely a great question. Uh, there's definitely a lot of things that Minneapolis can change and things that we want to progress in, but definitely more making people feel more comfortable when it's like going into public transportation or finding ways to um, combat uh, food insecurity. That's definitely topics that we have in our, in our uh, Minneapolis Youth Congress with our youth because our youth are using public transportation and our youth like currently uh, Minneapolis public schools aren't open. So therefore where are meals coming in? And those are topics that are really heavy on me because it, it, I was, in their places when I was younger as well. And uh, I can relate to a lot of the topics and concerns that our youth have. Uh, so I, with these changes, I know they can't change overnight, but these are having these conversations are, is very important and 
having a space where we can listen to our youth um, and what concerns them is, and being and as an adult now, young adult, being able to provide a space and even get out resources is what makes me right now, um, at least uh, makes me feel a little bit less like anxious for our students. Like, Beautiful. Melissa, and, and just a, a follow up, right, question to that. When you talk about some of your concerns, and I'm, I'm glad you talked about that because actually too many Minneapolis is starting school again next week. Our high schoolers will be on the bus again. As we know, Minneapolis has kind of changed so their busing system, so all public transportation is available. But if you were having a conversation with, say, an adult person like me in his late 40s, what would what advice would you give a, a, an adult about ways to engage uh, and respect the, the youth voice. What would you say to like an older adult like me about uh, being able to listen and appreciate uh, youth voice and activism? I would say definitely keep an open mind. Uh, you know, I feel like age is just a number, but if we are able to connect and we want the same thing at any age, we're able to connect in that way. And knowing that that's a factor, um, that there there's things that youth want, maybe older generations also want it, and just being open about, uh, you know, not having that typical, like, stereotype that, you know, these young people don't know what they're doing. Um, because it's, I, like, like I said, I joined back Minneapolis Youth Congress at the age of 21 again, and that was just a couple years after graduating high school. Now I'm about to graduate college, and going back, uh, I I was like, I need like definitely keep an open mind because you know those people, our youth, are the ones who are going to surprise you the most because they are the ones who uh, are, really do want to change and uh, giving them the space or like I said, giving those resources or like people in the bus or anywhere in the world our networks our connections and um, being able to support them in any way with those connections is important as well melissa it is it has been a a pleasure you know we could have talked uh quite a bit and 30 minutes always goes by never fast <laughs> yeah it is, it's never enough and, and first of all i want to thank you for taking the time out to to, to join in minneapolis 360 today I want to congratulate you on your upcoming graduation, sister. That's a that's a beautiful milestone yes. to be able to have. And and, and I uh, can't thank you enough and, and wish you well and want to uh, thank you for coming on this show and sharing uh, with us today. So, Melissa, I appreciate you, sister. Yes, thank you so much. And if there's any parent out there who would like to support us, please w- visit our website, Minneapolis Youth Congress, or our Facebook, um, Minneapolis Youth Congress. We'd love to have students and youth participate participate this year. Uh, thank you for having me. Thank you, Melissa. You know, Kim, I'm, I'm always uh, thankful to talk to the youth. And, and one of the questions that I wanted to ask her, too, was, and, and she answered it beautifully, was the fact that what do you tell adults about what the youth have to say. One of the things I've been working for a long time with a lot of youth in my, in my previous employment. And one of the things that, that I realized really quickly and a long time ago is to validate the things that they say, don't dismiss what they have to say because right. this is their perspective. And I'm, I'm glad she talked about that because there's a lot of times our older generation just kind of dismiss it as if they don't know what they're talking about, but you can't do that anymore. Right. That's right. Just not happening. Right. And especially in some of these times that, that we're dealing with. So hopefully next time we can get uh, Kai Sanchez on yeah. from the youth coordinating board. Um, and also too, maybe we can take a break, play that orange juice Jones song for the brother who called. <laughs> right. <laughs> I appreciate that, brother Kim, for right. even saying that song, right? Right. <laughs> he just came out of nowhere too. It was like it was the perfect timing because it was raining. <laughs> it, it was. It was right. So I mean, it, 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 he felt some type of way about that song. So hopefully, after uh, things get done with with Q Bear uh, at Brookdale Health, he can kind of maybe slip that slip in. Slip that or one something. in for him. Yeah. So uh, I thank you, Minneapolis. I appreciate you listening. We will be on next week. And listen, before we go, and I know we got to run. Yeah, I was going to say, we. I know we started a few minutes late. You maybe have four more minutes. I know there's some other things like the, you know, the new website that's dedicated to public safety information and resources that we could probably give out. 
Yep, absolutely. But I, I teased this, so I got to make sure I say it right. <laughs> next <laughs> next week, Minneapolis, we have uh, Minneapolis Police Chief Arredondo coming on the show yes. uh, next week, right? So, <laughs> yes. Kim, it, it's, it's super exciting to have the chief on. Mm-hmm. He was on uh, um, last year uh, sometime, so this is his second time on. And I kind of wanted to plug that so folks can kind of tune in at 1 o'clock next week to hear uh, Chief Arredondo uh, come on the show. A lot of us who had uh, are following the trial know that he had testified on Monday. Uh, so he's been really busy. So just to make sure that uh, he's in. able to come in is a, is a blessing. It so, is a blessing. I like Chief Arredondo. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a huge fan of Chief Arredondo. You know, there's so many uh, things on his plate right now. Uh, so much has happened in the course of this year as we uh, run up on the the May, the date that, that, that George Floyd was killed and everything regarding that. I mean, I don't know how one person can really fit all that on his shoulders, but uh, one of the things that, that I know about Chief Rondo is that he always answers the bell when it comes to community. Mm-hmm. He always answers questions. He looks folks straight in the eye mm-hmm. and he gives them answers. And I think people appreciate that. And this is not just me, Minneapolis. And, and regardless of how you feel about anything that the city does, there, there's a few things that I know that is that tend to be true. And that one is that Arredondo will show up. Arredondo will answer the questions and Arredondo will be sincere about what he says. So I appreciate the chief being able to come on. So tune in Minneapolis at one o'clock and I know we got to get out of here. I get to talking about guests and things that are passionate and and time runs uh, from me. So uh, (laughs) with that being said, Minneapolis, uh, be safe, be blessed, be well. And I will see you next week. Chief Arredondo, one o'clock next Wednesday, Minneapolis. Tune in. One o'clock. We thank you again, Anthony Taylor, and we appreciate all that you are doing for the city of Minneapolis. Thank you, sister. All right.